Welcome to Greenhorn Linux. Linux for Greenhorns. On this episode of Greenhorn Linux, Adam explains, or rather should I say, attempts to explain how Linux works and why users are given so much choice. Hmm, honestly, I don't think this is going to be that good. I mean, he's not an expert in Linux. What is he thinking? Okay, okay, I get the point. I'm not an expert in Linux. So this is going to be a simplistic take on how Linux works. Let's get started. So in order for me to attempt to explain things, uh, I'm going to be using some diagrams and an analogy. So here it goes. We are going to think of an operating system as a building. The Windows operating system and Mac operating system come as huge buildings. If you want to change anything on how your operating system works, you usually have to add third-party software. And in this analogy, we are simply adding another level onto the building. It's not as easy to remove any of the lower levels and replace it with the new software. Now, I'm not talking about regular programs for this example. What I'm talking about is more like the core components. So let me give you an example using the Windows operating system. Let's say I don't like the file manager in the Windows operating system. And this is usually re referred to as Windows Explorer. So uh, instead, um, I want to install something like maybe uh, Free Commander. In the Windows operating system environment, I never replace Windows Explorer. Windows Explorer is a core component, and all I do is I add the third-party application on top of the operating system. Now, this isn't necessarily uh, bad, but uh, after a while, if I keep adding on maybe like how Wi-Fi connections are done um, and uh, other type of, of programs uh, on top of the Windows operating system, before you know it, I'm going to have a huge skyscraper. And after a while, all of these third-party add-ons could take a toll on system resources, unfortunately. Now it is worth mentioning, if you happen to love all of the core components of the Windows operating system and um, don't plan on switching anything out, this really isn't an issue. As you've probably already guessed, uh, Linux takes a different approach. The basic idea with Linux is to start with a much smaller building or foundation. So yes, you have core components that, just like Windows, really can't be replaced easily. But that part of the building is much smaller and I actually think of it more of a foundation rather than the whole building like the Windows operating system. So for example, you have the Linux kernel as part of the foundation and in most cases have the X window system. Uh, just a quick side note, from now on if I say window or windows, uh, I mean windows such as what you see on the screen and see how everything's moving around, yes, uh, Linux calls these windows too. If I want to reference Windows as in the OS, I will either say Windows OS or I will say Windows Operating System just so there isn't any confusion. Here we have our small foundation. From here we will add all sorts of stuff such as how we manage Windows and Linux to our login screen, to our panels for accessing programs, to our file managers, and instead of just adding on level after level to an already big building such as Windows operating system or the Mac operating system, uh, in Linux you are constantly swapping in and out levels to make the building that you want and also the size that you want. Uh, this is why you have so many distributions on Linux and they all feel vastly different. Uh, you have the famous Ubuntu which currently to my knowledge uh, fits uh, on a 700 megabyte uh, install CD and that's a full-blown operating system uh, to other distributions such as damn small Linux which can fit inside 50 megabytes uh, compared to Windows 7 that requires a DVD with over 2 gigs for the install uh, this is even before uh, you've added on any third-party software to the Windows operating system. Now in a future episode I am planning on going over some of the different Linux distributions, uh, some of the core components that make up these Linux distributions, and uh, I would even like to get into some of the desktop environments such as KDE, uh, GNOME, and XFCE. Unfortunately it's a lot of these aspects that make it harder for a new Linux user uh, just because there is so much choice. Uh, now the advantage to all of this choice is that once you start understanding this stuff um, hopefully you'll be able to either create or find a Linux distribution that works perfect for you. 
That's kind of the beauty about Linux, right? I mean, it's all about you and how you want to build your operating system. Um, now, I will admit there are some distributions that are much more geared towards the beginners, uh, which is probably what I would recommend for a new user to stick with, and that will all be covered in a future episode. All right, I have probably talked for way too long. Uh, people are probably bored to tears, so this is probably a good time to say, check out my website, greenhornlinux.com, and I'll catch you later.